erosion, transportation and deposition all work along the course of a river. Let's find out how and where these processes take place. After rainfall, a river can develop more energy to erode its channel. It will do this through vertical erosion or lateral erosion. There are four main types of erosion processes to consider. First is hydraulic action, where the force of the water hits the riverbanks and bed. This is particularly effective with lots of fast flowing water. Next is abrasion, where the river load hits into the banks and bed of the river, knocking off particles. After that, there's attrition, where stones in the river knock into each other, creating smaller and smoother stones. Solution is the final process, where certain rocks are more likely to be dissolved in slightly acidic rainwater. The eroded material from the river will then be transported along by the river current in a number of different methods. Traction is where the heaviest particles are rolled along the riverbed, while saltation is the bouncing of slightly smaller particles also along the riverbed. As particles get smaller, they can be moved through suspension in the water, until they get so small they can be dissolved in the water as solution. When the velocity of the river is highest, more material will be carried, and the river might look quite muddy. As the river velocity decreases, the lack of energy will lead to sediments being deposited. Larger rocks are usually deposited in the upper course following heavy rain, and after short distances. The smaller the sediment, the further it can be carried, and will be deposited on the river's banks and bed. At the mouth, the shallow gradient and the effect from the tides allows large amounts of deposition to take place. Knowing and understanding these processes will help in the appreciation of how different features and landforms are created along the course of the river.